And yet we have so many people nowadays who want us to run back to the Old Testament and make us become Israelites in order to be Christians. <laughs>
In Acts 15, the church is fighting over this stuff. Listen to this, guys, in Acts 15. We have heard that some of you went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. Well, let's go a little closer. Yeah. To the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Okay? Because in the early church, you have Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians coming together. And there's a lot of differences between their cultures. And so this was something the early church struggled with. We're not left to try and figure out this stuff on our own. The early church was struggling with this. Let's see what counsel they gave. The early church was talking about it. They were trying to figure out what are we supposed to do here? Okay. To the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, we have heard that some of you went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So some people came trying to teach that you had to obey Jewish concepts and ideas. So we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we are writing. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. It seemed good to us and good to the Holy Spirit. We're trying to figure out what you guys need to keep what you guys need to do as Gentiles. We're, we're certainly trying to figure this out. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit told us. And Judas and Silas are going to confirm this. This is all we want to burden you with. Okay? Abstain from food sacrificed to idols. Okay? We, wouldn't, we don't want you to do that. Abstain from blood. From, and I think this from blood has to do with, you know, um, like murder, killing, you know, that type of thing. Um, from the meat of strangled animals and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. Farewell. And that's it. Where's your tattoos in here? Hey, you guys can't have tattoos. You can't. Look, the, the church, the early church was trying to discuss, are we supposed to make you adhere to all of the Old Testament or not? Do you essentially have to become a Jew in order to be a Christian? And the conclusion of the early church was no. Here's a few basic standards of morality that you must follow. Follow those things. It will do you. It will go well for you. And that's it. Farewell. And so, if the early church was this open in terms of what of the Old Testament commands that Gentiles needed to adhere to, how much more today as our Gentile churches continue to grow? But there are people that teach you must keep all 600 commandments, 600 plus commandments in the Old Testament in order to be a Christian. I don't think it's there. I don't think it's there. So, Mordecus, I believe that you are well within your rights and your and a good understanding of biblical interpretation to have a tattoo. I don't see anything wrong about it. And a lot of people will do this. Well, you must have got that before you became a Christian, right? You must have gotten that before you became a Christian. You can get a tattoo after you become a Christian, <laughs> okay? It's not a sin to get a tattoo. What does the tattoo represent? What does it mean? What are you doing with it? I think that is what matters. Victor says, I always thought this was like, don't put tattoos for dead people on your body. Like when someone's cousin dies and they tattoo them on their body as some sort of memorial. Well, the wording that is used, it's, it's hard to understand what he means by tattoos for the dead. Okay. He says, do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself. And I could understand why do not put tattoo marks on yourself. It might be implied for the dead. Right, Because he just talked about for the dead in verse 28. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself. I am the Lord. But I don't know that I don't know that a proper interpretation of that. It, there was a specific there's a specific passage or passage. There's a specific thing that these people are doing that God is identifying and saying, don't do that. There, there's a specific pattern that they're living out. And God is saying, don't do that. Okay. Now, I don't know that we are privy to what they're actually doing, okay? Was it just them tattooing themselves in memory of so-and-so? I don't think so. I don't know what cutting your body for the dead is or putting tattoo marks on yourself is here, but I don't think that it is in memory of so-and-so. I don't believe that that's what's being targeted here, okay? I mean, look at the context. Look at the sorts of things he's talking about. 
In your fifth year, you may eat of its fruit, blah, blah, blah. Do not eat meat with blood still in it. Do not practice divination or seek omens. Do not cut your hair at the sides of your head or clip the edges of your beard. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or make tattooed marks on yourself. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will turn to prostitution, be filled with wickedness, etc. So the other thing that I would point out is if somebody is telling you you can't have a tattoo, I mean the, the passage right before it, do they eat their steak only well done? If they have steak, do they eat it only well done? Do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. I mean, medium rare has got the blood still in it. They better be eating their steak well done. Are they trimming their beards? Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip the edges of your beard. And this seems more absolute and definitive to me than just a blanket tattoo. Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip the edges of your beard. I know people have said that means don't have a weird beard, right? It's not, it's not what it says. It says don't cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip the edges of your beard. It says don't do it at all. Whereas at least the tattoo one says don't cut your body for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. So there's at least, I think, a better argument that verse 28 might be dependent upon why you're getting it. Whereas in verse 27, it says don't cut your beard, period. So I just think it's special pleading. And that people don't understand how to read their Bible. And they end up, you, you know, it takes a lot of redemptive historical understanding to recognize, okay, this doesn't apply anymore. Okay. The simplistic version is to just go into the Bible and say, oh, look what it says. Got to do that. Martin says, when I heard Dr. White talk about it, he said he thinks for the dead is in reference to evil spirits and things, i.e. getting tattoos to appease demons or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. And I, and I think that's much more likely, Martin. I think that's much more likely than something like in memory of. BJ says context. There was an ancient Near Eastern practice that was being called out. That's exactly right, BJ. And that's what I'm trying to get at. I think they're trying to target a specific practice. God is saying that thing that they're doing over there, don't do that thing. And the way they identified that thing is, hey, they're cutting their bodies for the dead and putting tattoo marks on themselves. Don't do that. Okay. Exactly right. Again, we have a we have a biblical example of what to do in this situation. And and what did the early church focus on? They gave them four things, and I don't think these are meant to be exhaustive, but they're meant to be representative. What do they focus on? They focus on morality. Hey, guys, we were talking about the Old Testament. You guys are Gentiles. We're not sure how much you need to keep, but let's focus on having good morality. Okay? Seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us, not to burn you with anything beyond this. Abstain from food sacrificed to idols. That's kind of a morality type thing. Okay? Abstain from blood, from meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. Do these things and you'll, you're going to do well. And yet we have so many people nowadays who want us to run back to the Old T Testament and make us become Israelites in order to be Christians. That wasn't even what they did in the early church when this was a very Jewish movement. We're thousands of years later. I mean, Christianity is primarily Gentile at this point. Why are we doing this? Why? That's not the biblical teaching. It's not the biblical example. Hey guys, Pastor Channer here. And if you enjoy our content, would you please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below? It helps very much. In addition, if you would like to get more involved in our communities, you can do so in the links down in the description to both our Twitch and our Discord channels. We'd love to see you there. Take care. God bless. Bye now.